but let us return for a time to aliens. So you started to define sort of the the model, the parameters of uh, grabbiness, right? Or the uh, as we approach grabbiness. So what happens? So the, again, the we, there was three parameters. Yes. There's the speed at which they expand. There's the rate at which they appear in time. And that rate has a constant and a power. So we've talked about the history of life on Earth suggests that power is around six, but maybe three to 12. We can say that constant comes from our current date, sort of sets the overall rate. Mm -hmm. And the speed, which is the last parameter, comes from the fact that when we look in the sky, we don't see them. So the model predicts very strongly that if they were expanding slowly, say 1% of the speed of light, our sky would be full of vast spheres that were full of activity. That is, at a random time when a civilization is first appearing, if it looks out into its sky, it would see many other grabby alien civilizations in the sky. And they would be much bigger than the full moon. They'd be huge spheres in the sky. Mm -hmm. And they would be visibly different. We don't see them. Can we pause for a second? Okay. There's a bunch of hard steps that Earth had to pass to arrive at this place we are currently, which we're starting to launch rockets out into space. We're kind of starting to expand. A bit, so right. Very slowly, okay. But this is like the birth. It, it, if you look at the entirety of the history of Earth, we're now at this precipice of like expansion. We could, we might not choose to, but if we do, we will do it in the next 10 million years. 10 million, wow. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Uh, I was thinking more a like short a time on the on the cosmological scale. So that that is, it might be only a thousand. But the point is, if it's even if it's up to ten million, that hardly makes any difference to the model. So I might as well give you ten million. This this, <laughs> this makes me feel I was I was so stressed about planning what I'm going to do today, and now right, you got plenty of time. Plenty of time. Uh, I just need to be generating some offspring quickly here. Okay. Um, so and there's this moment. <laughs> <laughs> this 10 million uh, year gap uh, or window when we start expanding. And you're saying, okay, so this is an interesting moment where there's a bunch of other alien civilizations that might at some history of the universe arrived at this moment we're here. They passed all the hard steps. There's a, there's a model for how likely it is that that happens. And then they start expanding. And you think of an expansion as almost like a, a sphere Right. That's a, when you say speed, we're talking about the speed of the radius growth. Exactly. Like the this. surface, how fast the surface how expands. Fast. Okay. And so you're saying that there is some speed for that expansion, average speed, and then we can play with that parameter. And if that speed is super slow, then maybe that explains why we haven't seen anything. If it's super well, fast, well, it would get the slow would create the puzzle. It slow predicts we would see them, but we don't see them. Okay. And so okay. the way to explain that is that they're fast. So the idea is, uh -oh. if they're moving really fast, then we don't see them until they're almost here. And okay, this is counterintuitive. All right, hold on a second. So it's, it, I think this works best when I say a bunch of dumb things. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then. Uh, you uh, elucidate the full complexity and the beauty of the dumbness. Okay, so there's these spheres out there in the universe that are made visible because they're sort of uh, using a lot of energy. So they're generating a lot they're of light stuff. stuff. They're, they're changing stuff. things. They're changing things. And change would be visible a long like, way off. They, yes. They would take apart stars, rearrange them, restructure galaxies. They, they would do All big, kinds big of huge stuff. Okay. If they're expanding slowly, we would see a lot of them because the universe is old, is relative, is old right. enough to where we would see the that expansion. is. We're assuming we're just typical, in, you know, maybe at the fiftieth percentile of them. So, like half of them have appeared so far; the other half will still appear later. Hmm. And um, the the math of our best estimate is that they appear roughly once per million galaxies, <laughs> and we would meet them in roughly a billion years if uh, we expanded out to meet them. So we're looking at a grabby aliens model, 3D sim. Right. What's, what's this, that's the actual name of the video. What, uh, by the time we get to 13.8 billion years, the fun begins. Okay, so this is, this is um, right. we're watching a three-dimensional sphere rotating. I presume that's the universe and then the right. grabby aliens are expanding and filling that universe. Exactly with all kinds of uh, and fun. And then pretty soon it's all full. It's full. So that's how the grabby aliens come in contact, first of all, with other aliens, 
And then um, with us humans, the following is a simulation of the grabby aliens model of alien civilizations. Civilizations are born that expand outwards at constant speed. A spherical region of space is shown. By the time we get to 13.8 billion years, this sphere will be about 3,000 times as wide as the distance from the Milky Way to Andromeda. Okay, this is fun. It's huge. Okay, it's huge. Um, all right. So why don't we see, uh, we're, we're one little tiny, 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 tiny dot in that giant, giant sphere. Right. Uh, why don't we see any of the grabby aliens? It depends on how fast they expand. So you could see that if they expanded at the speed of light, you wouldn't see them until they were here. Uh, so like out there, if somebody is destroying the universe with a uh, vacuum decay, there's this, there's this, you know, doomsday scenario where somebody somewhere could change the vacuum of the universe and that would expand at the speed of light and basically destroy everything it hit. But you'd never see that until it got here because it's expanding at the speed of light. If you're expanding really slow, then you see it from a long way off. So the fact we don't see anything in the sky tells us they're expanding fast, say over a third the speed of light. And that's really, really fast. But that's what you have to believe if you look out and you don't see anything. Now you might say, well, how... Maybe I just don't want to believe this whole model. Why should I believe this whole model at all? And our best evidence why you should believe this model is our early date. We are right now at almost 14 billion years into the universe on a planet around a star that's roughly 5 billion years old. But the average star out there will last roughly 5 trillion years. <laughs> that is a thousand times longer. And remember that power law it says that the chance of advanced life appearing on a planet goes as the power of sixth of the time. So if a planet lasts a thousand times longer, then the chance of it appearing on that planet, if everything would stay empty at least, is a thousand to the sixth power or 10 to the 18. Mm -hmm. So enormous, overwhelming chance that if the universe would just stay sit and empty and waiting for advanced life to appear, when it would appear would be way at the end of all these planet lifetimes. That is the long planets near the end of the lifetime, trillions of years into the future. So, But we're really early compared to that. And our explanation is, at the moment, as you saw in the video, the universe is filling up. In roughly a billion years, it'll all be full. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it's too late for advanced life to show up. So you had to show up now before that deadline. Okay. Can, can we break that apart a little bit? Okay. Or linger on some of the things you said. So with the power law, the things we've done on Earth, the model you have says that it's very unlikely, like we're lucky SOBs. Is that is that mathematically right. correct to say? We, we're crazy early. That so is when early means like in the history of the universe. In the history, of the, okay. So, given this model, how do we make sense of that? If we're super, right. can we just be the lucky ones? Well, okay. ten to the eighteen lucky. You know, yeah. how, how lucky do you feel? <laughs> Uh, so, you know, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty lucky, line. right? You know, 10 to the 18 is, is a billion billion. So then if you were just being honest and humble, that that means, what does that mean? It means uh, one of the assumptions that calculated this crazy early must be wrong. Yeah. That's what it means. So the key assumption we suggest is that the universe would stay empty. So most life would appear like a thousand times longer later than now, yeah. if everything would stay empty waiting for it to appear. What, what is, so what is non-empty? So the exactly? grabby aliens are filling the universe right now, roughly at the moment they've filled half of the universe and they've changed it. And when they fill everything, it's too late for stuff like us to appear. But wait, hold on a second. Did anyone help us get lucky? If it's so difficult, what, how do, uh, like what? So it's like cancer, right? <laughs> There's all these cells, each of which randomly does or doesn't get cancer. And eventually some cell gets cancer and, you know, we were one of those. <laughs> but hold on a second. Okay. But we got it early. We got it early super... compared to the prediction with an assumption that's wrong. That's So that's how we do a lot of, you know, theoretical analysis. You have a model that makes a prediction that's wrong, then that helps you reject that model. Okay, let's try to understand exactly where the wrong is. So the assumption is that the universe is empty. Stays empty. Stays empty. And, and waits until this advanced life appears in trillions of years. That is, if the universe would just stay empty, if there was just, you know, nobody else out there, yeah. then when you should expect 
advanced life to appear, if you're the only one in the universe, when should you expect to appear? You should expect to appear trillions of years in the future. I see. Right, right. So this is a very sort of nuanced mathematical uh, assumption. I, I don't think we can intuit it cl cleanly with words. Uh, but if you assume that you're just wait, the universe stays empty and you're waiting for one life uh, civilization to pop up, then it's gonna, it should happen very late, much right. later than now. And the, uh, if you look at Earth, uh, the way things happen on Earth, it happened much, 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 much earlier than it was supposed to according to this model if you take the initial assumption. Therefore, you can say, well, the initial assumption of the universe staying empty is very unlikely. Right. So, okay. And the other, the other alternative theory is the universe is filling up and will fill up soon. And yeah. so we are typical for the origin date of things that can appear before the deadline. Before the deadline. Okay, it's filling up. So why don't we see anything if it's filling up? Because they're expanding really fast. Close to the speed of light. Exactly. So we will only see it when it's here. Almost here. Okay. Uh, what are the ways in which we might see a quickly expanding? <laughs> this, this is both exciting and terrifying. <laughs> it is terrifying. It's like watching a truck like driving at you at 100 miles an hour. And uh, Right. So we would see spheres in the sky, at least one sphere in the sky, yeah. growing very rapidly. And like you know, very I, rapidly. Right. <laughs> yes, very rapidly. <laughs> so we're not. So there's there's you know different because we were just talking about ten million right. years. This would be you might see it ten million years in advance coming. I mean, you still might have a long warning. Or again, oh, the universe is fourteen billion years old. <laughs> the typical origin times of these things are spread over several billion years. So the chance of one originating at a you know very close to you in time is very low. So they still might take millions of years from the time you see it, from the time it gets here. Yeah, You'll have a million years of your ears to be terrified of this well, fast sphere coming at you. <laughs> but, but but coming at you very fast. So if they're traveling yes. close to the speed of light. But they're coming from a long way away. So remember, the rate at which they appear is one per million galaxies. Right. So they're, they're roughly 100 galaxies away. I see. So the delta between the speed of light and their actual travel speed is very important. Right, so if, if they're going at, say, half the speed of light. We'll have a long time. Then, to, yeah. But what if they're traveling exactly at a speed of light? Then we see them like. Then we, then we wouldn't have much warning, but that's less likely. Well, we, we can't exclude it. And they could also be somehow traveling faster than the speed of light. Or not, I think we can exclude, because if they could go faster than the speed of light, then they would just already be everywhere. <laughs> so yeah. in, a, in a universe where you can travel faster than the speed of light, you can go backwards in space-time. So any time you appeared anywhere in space-time, you could just fill up everything. Yeah, and... So I anybody mean, in the future, whoever appeared, they, they would have been here by now. Can you exclude the possibility that those kinds of aliens aren't already here? Uh, well, you have we should have model. a different discussion of that. Right, okay. so, well, so let's actually <laughs> leave that, let's leave that discussion aside okay. just to linger and understand the grabby alien expansion, which is beautiful and fascinating. Okay. So there's these giant expanding spheres, uh, spheres of alien civilizations. Now, uh, when those spheres spheres collide, mathematically, it was, it's very likely that we're not the first collision of grabby uh, alien civilizations. I suppose is one way to say it. So there's we're, like the first time the spheres touch each other, recognize each other. Right. They meet. Um, they they recognize each other first before they meet. Um, they see each other coming. They see each other coming, and then so there's a bunch of them. There's a, there's a combinatorial thing where they start seeing each other coming, and then there's a, a third neighbor. It's like what the hell? And then there's a fourth one. Okay, right. so what does that you think look like? Um, what lessons from human nature? That's the only data we have. Well, uh, can you draw so, so the, the story of the history of the universe here yes. is what I would call a living cosmology. So what I'm excited about in part by this model is that it lets us tell a story of cosmology where there are actors who have agendas. So most ancient peoples, they had cosmologies, the stories they told about where the universe came from and where it's going and what's happening out there. And their stories, they like to have agents and actors, gods or something out yeah. there doing things. And lately our favorite cosmology is dead kind of boring. 
you know, we're the only activity we know about or see and everything else just looks dead and, and empty. Yeah. But this is now telling us, no, that's not quite right. <laughs> At the moment, the universe is filling up and in a few billion years, it'll be all full. And from then on, the history of the universe will be the universe full of aliens. Yeah, so that's a it's a really good reminder, a really good way to think about cosmology is we're surrounded by a vast darkness and we don't know what's going on in that darkness until the light from whatever generate lights arrives here. So we kind of, yeah, we look up at the sky, okay, there's stars, oh, they're pretty, but you don't think about the giant expanding spheres of aliens. <laughs> right, because you don't <laughs> that are quick, see them, but, that are but now our approaching. date, the, looking at the clock, if you're clever, the clock tells you. So I like the analogy with the ancient Greeks. So yes. you, you might think that an ancient Greek you know, staring at the universe couldn't possibly tell how far away the sun was or how far away the moon is or how big the earth is, that all you can see is just big things in the sky you can't tell. But they were clever enough, actually, to be able to figure out the size of the earth and the distance to the moon and the sun and the size of the moon and sun. That is, they could figure those things out, actually, by being clever enough. And so similarly, we can actually figure out where are the aliens out there in space-time by being clever about the few things we can see, one of which is our current date. And so now that you have this living cosmology, we can tell the story that the universe starts out empty, and then at some point, things like us appear, very primitive, and then some of those stop being quiet and expand. And then for a few billion years, they expand, and then they meet each other. And then for the next hundred billion years, they commune with each other. <laughs> that is, the usual models of cosmology say that in roughly 100, 150 billion years, the expansion of the universe will happen so much that all you'll have left is some galaxy clusters and they, that are sort of disconnected from each other. But before then, for the next 100 million years, 100 billion years, excuse me, um, they will interact. There will be this community of all the grabby alien civilizations and each one of them will hear about and even meet thousands of others. And we might hope to join them someday and become part of that community. That's an interesting thing to aspire to.